Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Selamat pagi Good morning Respectively The Dean of Faculty of Medicine Universitas Gajah Mada Profesor Teguh Aryandono Representative from WSO Burita And all the international speakers Chair of the Symposium Committee the moderator, Prof. Sofia Mubarika, members of professional organizations, distinguished guests, and symposium attendant. Let us praise to thank God Almighty that we are all in good health to attend this international symposium on integrating research and action on dinghy. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia, as we know, known as an archipelago country with diverse geography and ecosystems such as coast, rice field, forest, urban and rural settlements, high density population. And for myself, I realized that Indonesia is very wide when I have already adult because when I was child in the primary uh, school it was thought that Indonesia is really very wide spread from Aceh up to Papua but I could not imagine but after I'm adult and have opportunity to travel around the globe I realized that Indonesia is really really country with a huge population. Just three days ago or four days ago, I traveled using a, a car around 12 hours only from one uh, province to another province. So you can imagine at night, at around 8, I depart from my place and then arrive around 8 in the morning. And I imagine if it was in US or maybe in uh, Europe, it was already across the country, across another uh, country. So with this kind of condition, then it is very susceptible to the changes in ecosystem. The rapid development, population increase, and urbanization will affect to the change of rural into urban areas. The changes of ecosystem will drive a continuous alteration in the behavior of and the behavior and the dynamic of vector borne diseases, including dinghy infection. Currently, dinghy infect not only children but also all ages, and it does not only occur in rainy season but all year long. And according to the Minister of Health Strategic Plan 2011-2014, the control of dinghy infection is one of the priorities of this uh, control diseases in Indonesia. Several factors including high mobility of the people, transformation and utilization of lands into residential areas, high density population, poor sanitation, puddles, and climate change are associated to the potential of the widespread of dinghy infection, which become public health problem that must be controlled rapidly and accurately. Currently, dinghy infection management aims to control mosquitoes as the factors and to provide early case management. International symposium that involve a various discipline such as this event today is very useful for exchanging information and experience. Of course, also presenting the research results in order to develop innovation for dinghy infection management. As we know, I think Prof. Rika and other group, also Pak Kalib and 
the Faculty of Medicine working together with uh, some universities in Australia and ASEAN to develop some kind of bacteria bacteria to be injected in the mosquitoes to make the mosquito infertile. But we're happy also the Institute of Research in the Ministry of Health already has resulted some kind of uh, you know a treatment to kill the mosquitoes very effectively and now started to be you know distributed and also sell in the market. Ladies and gentlemen, in Indonesia, although dengue case fatality rate already decreased to below 5%, but the morbidity rate is still high, infecting all ages, children to adults with the peak of children aged 3 to 5 years old. This infection causes a wide spectrum of clinical manifestation or symptoms from asymptomatic, mild fever, dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, to dengue shock syndrome or DSS that could be fatal even causing death. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing is guessed. In Indonesia, all four dengue serotypes, N1, 2, 3, and 4, are circulating with different genotypes than in other countries, requiring special strategy for management. Some efforts have been attempted to manage this problem, ranging from clin clinical and non-clinical aspects, such as developing surveillance system, as well as increasing research activities. And we expect that these efforts could be implemented into real action that could be better manage dengue infection. Dengue management program is still focusing on factor control and community education, community empowerment. In the last decade, many research on dengue vaccine and dengue specific treatment, such as developing anti dengue uh, virus and drug, have been conducted. Ladies and gentlemen, actually now we have a new approach that it is impossible to work only in one discipline, for example, like medicine. So therefore, in ASEAN has been established what they call it One Health Approach, which is approach that is not only from one discipline, but with many other disciplines, and not only using what they call it multidisciplinary approach, but transdisciplinary approach, which is from the beginning, as early as possible, this approach should be exposed to the students as early as possible, because in the real field, to tackle dinghy and also other zoonotic diseases, it is impossible if only medical staff and only faculty of medicine and only minister of health who are working on it. Ladies and gentlemen, research related to dinghy infection has been conducted in various disciplines, including those in the hospital, universities, or other research institutions. The scope of research includes genetic characterizations and the biology of the virus, factors, disease pathogenesis, immune system, environment, and disease burden analysis. Even the cost effective of the vaccine and treatment to the dengue infection. Nevertheless, all those research and efforts apparently were still conducted individually and not integrated. Fortunately, and we are happy, in 2013, a dengue vaccine development research consortium was established, consisting of nine institutions, ATT Universitas Airlangga, Medical Faculty Univers Universitas Indonesia, Medical Faculty Universitas Gajah Mada, BPPT, 
Ekman Institute, LIPI, Universitas Al-Azhar Indonesia, PSSP Institute Pertanian Bogor, and Center for Biomedical and Basic Technology of Health, National Institute of Health and Research Development as the coordinator. This consortium works in accordance to the expertise of each institution based on these research areas and roadmap that have been approved by all parties. The objective of these establishments are to have a synergy in research to avoid research duplication so that the utilization of the research budget will become more efficient and to speed up obtaining research goals. As we know that maybe the research budget in developing countries is much, much smaller compared to the developed countries. But now, I'm not sure because many developed countries also facing hard situation of economic development. Uh, we hope that these difficulties do not affect to our research. But anyhow, the very limited budget of research should be spent effectively and efficiently. So I hope innovative health research could be conducted among research institutions through this consortium because only through this collaboration the synergy and a solid team can be developed. I thank to the International, International Symposium Committee for their efforts to integrate and disseminate research results conducted by experts both from Indonesia and from abroad overseas to produce the real acts in controlling dengue. With cross-expertise approach and transdisciplinary approach and by integrating various research results, I hope we can obtain innovative ways to control dengue, including factor control, vaccine development, as well as dengue management. Also, it is expected that this international symposium may enhance the collaboration among researchers from various disciplines. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm almost finished. For those who are not be patient. And of course, I expect all of us can work together as a solid, robust, and reliable team again to conduct innovative research to control and eradicate dengue disease, maybe not only in Indonesia, but also surrounding countries. I hope this symposium will be running well and beneficial for all the participants. And so sorry, I just came, just started about to start because I just wait and report, reported from the committee that the audience is still 50%. So I'm, I was uh, with outside. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we hope that this symposium will be beneficial not only for all participants, but also to enhance the health status of our people, especially in Indonesia. And I know you are very serious when talking about research in dinghy, but don't forget to enjoy life also, especially our guests from overseas and also our representatives from WSO, because you have much money now, <laughs> to spend your money in Yogyakarta, because Yogyakarta is everything is cheap and beautiful. <laughs> and don't forget to visit Borobudur, because it is one of the seven wonders in the world previously recorded, but now I think, although not anymore recorded, but the beauty is still there. Finally, by praising Allah and saying, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, herewith I officially open the symposium on integrating research and action on dinghy. May God bless and guide all of us. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.